Okay. You ready? All right. We're going to start this today. I'm going, to, I'm going to tell you what the name of this message is. It's called The Committed Christian. Now I want to ask you a question. Are you? Woo. You know. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. There you go. <laughs> Down through the ages in history, men have used many ways to identify themselves as a Christian. Side of the fish, chains around their neck with crosses on them. That's two of the most popular ones. Once the Christians even identified themselves with a haircut. And many wore marks on their coat lapels. Uh, they wore robes and special clothes. Today, in this day and time, we see Jesus' first pins, crosses, fish, bumper stickers, posters, T-shirts, caps, Bibles, everything that says we're a Christian. Okay. <laughs> and many clergymen wear special collars and robes to, dene to, dene uh, to distinguish themselves from the regular people. Now, that comes from the Catholics, the Roman Catholics church to make a distinction between people and the religious leaders now there's no such distinction with God and in his word that there's any distinction between religious leaders and the people we are all servants of the Lord who are required to be faithful stewards Wherever the Lord calls us to serve him. We use the biblical word pastor, which he likens the pastor to a shepherd taking care of his flock. Now, some, some of these pastors, they let people call them reverend. And some of them want to be called reverend. But I don't use that term or title. Because in God's word, only God is to be revered, and only he is reverend. Psalms 111.9 tells you, let's see, where is it? Here it is. It says, he sent redemption unto his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and reverend is his name. His name, God's name, nobody else, okay? All right. <coughs> hmm. People use these symbols to identify themselves. I know a lot of us in here, we do it. It's all right. They use them, and there's nothing wrong with those symbols. There's only one problem. They're totally superficial. It is fine if you're a Christian and wear a button or a pen, but I think God has a better way for a believer to identify himself, right? You see, you can wear a button, be a church member, identify yourself as a Christian, and not be one. Now, I recently saw a man that uh, was arrested for murder. He had a cross on. He's trying to identify as a Christian. TV news report showed prostitutes wearing cross earrings. Hmm. Now, God's way is to be preferred, which means a Christian is to be recognized by how they live. See, buttons are totally superficial or just outward. There are even people who identify themselves as Christ, with Christ by the way they talk. They speak much of Christ using the expression, praise the Lord, God bless you, and Jesus loves you. Some talk about Christ all the time. Nothing in the world wrong with that. I like to do it myself. But a lot of things that are done outward, and if the heart is not right, they're not living in the Bible, teaches it is of no value whatsoever. Many of these people attend unbiblical churches and are part of churches who teach and practice false doctrines. Now, 1 Samuel 16, 7 says, for man looketh upon the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh upon the heart. Much more noticeable than any button is the way one lives his life. A true Christian who is committed to Christ 
can readily be recognized by what they do. A true Christian doesn't need a button or the sign of a fish bumper sticker on the back of their car to let people know they are a child of God. Jesus made his final address before going to the cross to his disciples, and that's in John 13, 31 through John 16, 33. That's your homework. You read that. Read that whole thing. That's what God tells you to be and to do to be his disciple. These instructions in there are warnings and commandments that stand as orders to us from our Lord down through the ages. They are rich, powerful, motivating, and come from our loving Savior who wants the best of each of us. They are all things true Christians committed to Christ must know and live. These words are significant because they are the final words of Jesus just before he leaves his disciples and goes to the cross. The disciples had before this time enjoyed the protection and the leadership of Christ in person. Now he was going to leave them and they were going to be alone. They needed instruction now to carry on their own. What is our greatest need in the lives of believers? Well, each of us who profess Christ must have in his life, have in him a life that shows a genuine, dynamic, visible, detectable commitment to our Lord Jesus Christ. This is not unusual or out of the ordinary. This is normal, ordinary way of a Christian's life. That's very important. Romans 12, 1 says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Reasonable service. That's all you have to do. Now, the commitment of Peter, Peter's statement of committal to Jesus was, I will lay down my life for you. Jesus responded to Peter and told him, he said, before the rooster crows three times, I mean, before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. Everybody knows that story, I think. Mm. Now that, at first, you know, that kind of sounds, oh, damn, he was being a little rough on old Peter, wasn't he? But he was not trying to discourage Peter. Peter was learning. He was a new Christian. He was learning. And all, as we all need, we need to learn something that is important for your life. Now, please do not take this message in the wrong way. Take it in the way Christ sent it to you. We are not born committed to Christ. That comes from learning about God's plan for the world and our part in it. As we learn, we become more committed. Peter's response was an emotional one. Yet to truly live for the Lord and be used by him, we need more than emotional response to the call to serve our Savior. Much of the Christian movement today has its driving force as an emotional reaction to service for the Lord. People are stirred by music, choruses, and rhythmic, rhythmic preaching. People rush down the aisles in a moment of emotion, yet often never live for the Lord or see their lives changed in any way. It's got to be changed. Emotional response is good, and it gets emotional when you see the glory of God and the love of God coming to this earth and dying on the cross for us who are lost in sin. He loved us who are his creation so much that even when we rebel against him in sin, he still came and suffered and died on the cross for us. Now think, who is Jesus? Jesus, he is our God, creator, who is all-powerful, and who spoke the universe into existence. 
that Almighty God came to this earth, humbled himself to sinful man, and allowed them to crucify him. And why did he do that? Do you know why he did that? He did that so that he might redeem them from their sins. The ones that crucified him and killed him. Make them children of God so they might spend eternity with him. Now, that's a, that's a big God, isn't it? Of course, the emotion of the moment will fade. Then the question is, what is motivating you and filling your heart with joy when the emotion of the moment fails? What will keep you going when you are alone or tempted, physically tired or exhausted, or you just feel complacent? Peter did deny Christ, as Christ said, but later, when completely disillusioned, Christ appears to Peter by the side of the sea. Peter had left with several other disciples and returned to his trade as a fisherman after Christ's death. Jesus appeared to Peter as he returned from a night's unfruitful fishing. I know all of y'all have heard this story too. Jesus tells him, say, cast out again on the other side of the boat. Peter complained, saying, well, <laughs> we fished all night with no luck, but because Christ said it, he obeyed. Needless to say, the nets there were overflowing with fish. Then Jesus said something pretty strange to Peter. He said, Peter, do you love me more than all these? Peter was kind of a little bit shocked. He said, Lord, you know I do. Three times Jesus asked him that same question. And every time Jesus said to him, Peter, then feed my lamb. Now, you know what he meant by feeding your lambs? He wants Peter to preach and teach the word, just like all the rest of us. That's our job. The, the Lord was showing Peter that to be, a true, <coughs> to be true to Christ, one had to live it. Peter had often given it lip service, yet when the emotion fades, he sees that he was not as committed as he even thought he was. He was embarrassed and he saw himself as God saw him. Outwardly, Peter had a good talk, but he was failing in his daily walk with the Lord. Now, Peter was a pretty strong man. We're talking pretty bad about him, aren't we? Mm. Peter also did not get mad and take offense at being challenged to examine himself. <coughs> Later, he writes in First and Second Peter, what a change. And if you'll read those verses in First and Second Peter, all of it, you'll see that he was encouraging and urging fervently, passionately for believers to serve the Lord. The emotion is still there, but now it is accompanied by a devoted and consistent service for the prayer for the Lord. Have you thought about what true faith is? Faith is action that is founded in commitment. The part of faith that gives us life to is to trust and commit to the promises of God. Yeah. Commitment and devotion to the Lord is in his truth will keep you going no matter what the circumstances. You know, in Hebrews 11, if you'll read the chapter of 11 of Hebrews, Tells about all the good people that did all the wonderful things. The things we wish we could have done. Noah, uh, Abraham, all of them. Yeah. All right. And we see all that, that works is just wonderful, glorious. But it's not always that way. God gives you something to do and it may not have that much glory to it. But you know what? You don't want to be there working looking for glory, limelight, or recognition. Be there for what God wants you to be there for, his calling. You know, oh Noah, he built a ship on dry land. Built a ship on dry land. Every day he preached to all the people around him. And none of them believed a word he said. Did not believe in God. 
He couldn't get, he, and you know, he should have just quit, wouldn't, shouldn't he? You know, you might as well give up. Ain't nobody listening to you. You're not doing any good, are you? But he stayed on that pathway that God had put him on and said, build this boat for me. And, of course, it was hard back-breaking work, but his faith, yes, his commitment, Kept him going and trusting in God. Even though it, and he completed the task. It just took him 120 years. Yeah, that would have been a long time. <laughs> Woo. Of course, he wanted to be liked like everybody else does. But you see, Noah knew God. And he trusted God. His faith was real. His trust was real. Now, the first 300 years after Christ returned to heaven, Christians were often tested as to their commitment. There was thousands of Christians tested and they passed. They proved they were committed to God. They didn't, ha and you know, even as the lions and the wild beasts came to devour them, they still knelt down and prayed and thanked the Lord for what he'd done for them. Even an old man named Polycarp. Has everybody heard of Polycarp? You probably have. Somewhere down the road. May not know who he is. He was burned alive at the stake. And when he was burned, he said, I cannot deny him who has been so faithful to me all these years. And as the flames were burning his body, the soldiers stabbed him with spears until the blood ran out of him so much that he put the fire out. They had rekindled the fire to burn him to death. Now that's something else. Now today Christ is not asking you to die for him. He's asking you to live for him. All right. You know, God gives us all talents for service. He calls it gifts. He gives you gifts. Everybody's got a talent for something. If nothing else, the presence, okay? Okay. Now, we all want to uh, be recognized, but guess what? may not all be recognized. There's work for all. You can see it as a matter of, can I do it? But rather, will I do it? What God wants us to do. Are you friendly? Do you visit and sensitive to the needs of others? Are you available when you're needed? And are you faithful in loving and serving my fellow believer? And like I said, a lot of times the everyday work that we need to do for the church or for each other or for whatever, for fellowship, it may seem kind of trivial. Of course, it's not as lot like when uh, Abraham took a long journey through a land where everybody was trying to kill him. And Gideon fought the mighty hordes of the uh, Midianites. Now, when Gideon was given a job by God, the first thing he had to do was destroy the altars of Babel and in the middle of the night. And some of them belonged to his own family. So I know he wasn't very popular with his own family. And he did a great job in delivering the Israelites. Now, you see what I mean by about commitment? You gotta be committed. Everybody has got to be committed. You know, uh, <coughs> Pastor Dustin back there, about two weeks ago, he, he preached a message that was really it touched my heart pretty good. I hope it touched everybody as much as it did me. Because I'm going to tell you a little bit about it. He told you, he said he hated to have to announce, but somebody else had died. And you know, that's one of them things. All these little jobs around here that we have to do for God, some of them are small things. And we, we sat there and we go, well, somebody else will do that. Yeah. Uh-uh. Somebody else is dead. 
It's your turn to do it. You see something needs to be done? Do it. Don't wait for somebody else to do it. See a piece of trash on the floor, pick it up, and go throw it in the trash can. That's pretty menial, but guess what? It's love of the Lord. Love of you fellow man. All right, let me ask you this. We've talked about signs and stuff to let everybody know you're a Christian. Do you rely on a carrying a sign, talking in a certain way, or wearing a pen, or having a bumper sticker on your car to identify you as a Christian? Or can people see you're a child of God by the committed way you live your life? That's very important. Whew, very important. So in other words, is your service with your lips or with your feet? <laughs> Lip service? Yeah, I'm a Christian. Feet service is I'm going to do. All right? Would you be honest enough to ask yourself a very revealing question? Does what I do so show that I love the Lord? And would you love the Lord enough and are you committed enough to see your failure to confess it as a sin and make a new commitment to live for Christ? Will you do that today? Anybody? I know I will. Let's all do that, okay? All right. Don't forget we got a potluck right after, right after this and we're going to have a motorcycle meeting, right? And after that, they're going to have a little ride. Rick Sherrett, Rick Sherrett, raise your hand so everybody knows who you are. If you want to go, that's the man to see. Anything else anybody has? Okay, I'm going to go ahead and close this in prayer. Lord, thank you for this wonderful day. Thank you for this message that you gave us, short and sweet. And Lord, let us take something home with us that will touch our heart, open our heart, and cleanse our heart so we'll receive and do what we need to do for you, Lord. And do it for you in your precious name. Lord, uh, we thank you for this food that has been brought and provided today. And we ask that you bless it to the nourishment of our bodies. That way everybody will be ready to eat when we get back there. Watch over and guide us. Keep us strong in your faith, Lord. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Thank <laughs> you.